the, the common methodology to develop or, um, or put AI into a vehicle, you can say it's rather complicated. Uh, you would usually go through, uh, you set the requirements, exactly what features you want to add in, what is the safety level or uh, accuracy level uh, you actually uh, would like to reach. And then you go ahead and develop your, your AI, your system, your complete system, and then you validate it. The validation is usually, not usually, the validation is done using uh, large amounts of data. Usually you just, uh, you, you do the testing either uh, offline, uh, basically you have hundreds of thousands of, of miles uh, recorded, and then you can run your algorithms and uh, uh, compute, like calculate what is your current accuracy and safety level. And the other way, and the other, um, the other branch uh, in this validation is actually taking this uh, AI uh, for a ride. You basically test it on the road to assess the safety level only until you're satisfied, until the OEM is satisfied from, this, uh, from, the, from the safety level, then it could, of course, approve that this system is safe enough. Another approach, uh, uh, which can say it's uh, a bit more uh, aggressive, is to uh, do uh, massive uh, updates uh, over the air. Uh, you can also do this approach, and I guess it's relying mostly on the fact that uh, the experience or the validation has to be done in parallel using thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of vehicles. So the amount of, of knowledge, uh, the amount of validation you gain is massive. And through uh, collecting this massive amount of data, you would actually would like to identify your fail cases and then improve your AI and then to instantly uh, deploy it because you know something better you can do. So I guess as long as you are certain the, the validation you have performed uh, is good enough, then you can go ahead and, uh, and do that. Current validation or testing, I mentioned earlier, uh, the validation or, uh, or, or testing procedure for AI, you can say they are not uh, covering uh, all use cases. They are not covering very special uh, corner cases uh, and so on because the testing has to be done in very sterile environment. The amount of interaction uh, that can be simulated there you can say it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fairly uh, limited. Uh, but um, the, the OEMs, the, actually the car manufacturers, uh, would like to know, uh, I think, first of all, for themselves, uh, what is the safety level. They have to feel very comfortable in, in adding this AI in, in, in what they're actually uh, uh, delivering, uh, because otherwise we, we might have uh, these uh, unfortunate uh, events uh, that you don't really understand what went wrong because Everybody can see there is a pedestrian on the road. So how come did the vehicle uh, collide with that, right? So uh, there are, um, you can say that machine learning is training, deep learning is training the algorithm by exposing it to a massive amounts of, of data. But there will still be in the long tail, if you're looking about uh, the distribution of the data, in the long tail, you'll have many corner cases, perhaps uh, think that for you as a human being, uh, they are very um, um, clear. So let's say talking about a pedestrian wearing um, a, a costume, right? Let's say it's Halloween and he's wearing a costume like a dinosaur. So perhaps your AI did not see this example. So when this dinosaur is crossing the road, your AI is practically blind to it. So you can run many of these uh, horror uh, cases. And I guess the OEMs do that. Uh, they imagine many of these horror cases and they do want to make sure they are covering um, uh, many of these before uh, they launch uh, uh, the AI.